Oh, I forgot lipstick. Much better. Welcome back to my channel. Today's mug says get lost in what you love and I think it's super cute. Not only that, but it holds a ton of tea, which is perfect. Because today's video vibe is all about curling up with a cup of tea and a good book as I share with you the list of books that I read in 2019. I believe this will be the fifth year that I've done this video. Every single year I go through and tell you all the books that I read that year, starting back in 2015 when I told you the books that I read in 2014. That's crazy. I'm going to list all of those videos down below. These are definitely timeless videos that will never go out of style because a book, no matter how old, will never like lose its trend, if that makes sense. So if you are looking for more books to read this year, definitely check out all those videos and see the list of books that I've read these last few years. I'm so excited to finally share with you what I have been reading this year. If you follow me on social media, you may have seen a few glimpses, a few boomerangs of current reads, but now is the time to really just like tell you the truth about what I read, what I liked, what I didn't like, what I would recommend, what I wouldn't recommend. Marnie, that's a fire. Oh my God, don't get a cat. Anyway, right next to me off frame, I have all of the books that I could find that I still tangibly have that I read this year to show you, as well as the list in my journal of all the books I read. Last year when I made this video, I believe I read 30 books. And this year, unfortunately, I only finished 19 and I'm currently reading the 20th book that I started like last year, but will carry on into 2020. For me, it's kind of discouraging to see that I read 30 books one year and only 20 this year, although 20 is still like a decent number. Also last year I was still in school and I know that a ton of the books on that list were because I had to read them for class. This year, post-grad life, everything that I read was for pleasure and because I wanted to. I also knew that I really wanted to start reading more books by other creators, content creators, YouTubers this year because I needed to know more about the craft. I wanted to know more about creators' backstories and upbringings and their lives and their road to success. So you'll notice that trend a lot, especially like at the beginning of my list for 2019 that I read a lot of YouTube books. Other than that, like I'll go through and I'll tell you all my cat just climbed the wall. They're literally nuts as soon as I film. Last night, my YouTube friend Jan and I were FaceTiming and we decided to start our own book club in 2020. So she and I are reading a book maybe once a month, depending on what we're doing. But the first book that we are currently reading, we have until February 1st to finish. So it's like a book a month. And I thought this would be a great time just to integrate another thing that you can do every single month. And that is receive your Sips by Tea box. <laughs> this isn't a sponsorship, but they do send me a box of tea every single month to share with you guys and I'm sure you've seen this in my content before but if not every single month you'll receive a box you can go onto their website and take a quiz it'll ask you questions like do you like caffeinated tea do you like nutty tea fruity tea and it will help personalize your box of tea every single month every single month the tea is different I like to be surprised but you can log on and see what tea is coming if you don't like surprises but this month for my January teas I've got this adorable Nepal tea called Buddha's blend but this is just white tea so I have a few packs of that. I also have this creamy orange lapacho. I'm probably saying that wrong, but it's just like a really calm herbal tea. All the tea I got this month is loose leaf. That's another thing that I said I was okay with. I can do a mix of bagged and loose leaf. So they always give you this little reusable bag full of bags to put your loose leaf tea in, which is super nice. I have this super cute chocolate candy cane tea. Inside, all those little red things are actually little candy canes. So this will be a really good chocolate peppermint herbal tea as well. Actually, it has black tea in it, so not herbal. Do not drink this before bed. And then they sent over this raspberry rose oolong tea, and I really like oolong, so this looks super cute as well. But it's always so fun opening my Sip Spy box every single month because I don't know what I'm going to get, and I love expanding my tea collection. I drink tea every single day. I mean, I have a huge cup of it right next to me as we film. But if you want more information, you can click the link in my description box. And if you want $5 off of your first subscription box, use my code McKay of five at checkout. Thanks again, Subspy, for sending me this box. It makes every single month exciting and something to look forward to. But yeah, that's all I really have to say for the intro. So before we get started, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below what current book you are reading or what book you read in 2019 that you would recommend. And subscribe. We really are like one big family with lots of love to go around. It's never too late to join. All you have to do is hit subscribe. Also, don't forget to click the bell because this notifies you every time I upload a new video. And I always shout out the first comment on my social media. So be sure to be following me on social 
social media as well. With all of that being said, here are the 20 books that I read in 2019. The first book that I read in 2019 was given to me, I believe like literally January 1st or January 2nd, like as soon as I got back to work after the holidays, but it was given to me by a coworker. It's called The Prophet, beautiful illustrations. It kind of read like a Greek myth or The Alchemist, like that type of book. And he read it, thought I would enjoy it. Let me borrow his copy. I fell in love. I copied down so many quotes. In fact, I quoted a ton of it at the beginning of this year in my content. Something that still sticks out to me is this quote about how your home is the extension of the body and how you have to take care of it the same way that you would take care of the self because it's like an external body of yours. But yeah, it's just like full of stuff like that. It was a beautiful story. So I'm really happy that he loaned me that book. It was a great way to start off my year. So thanks so much, Dan, if you're watching. The second book that I started reading this year was actually another recommendation from a coworker at my job, and that is Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. So shout out to Sam for telling me that I would love this book because he was so right. I completely ate it up. If you work in the food industry or are a server or waitress, you'll love this book. Basically, the protagonist is in her young 20s, living in New York, hoping to be a writer, but starting her first serving job at a restaurant, and it kind of takes you through so many details of working in a restaurant, like the people, the stress, the guests. It just completely felt at home for me because I knew exactly what she was going through. Like when she cried, you know, in the beginning when everyone felt mean to her, <laughs> like this book just captured serving so well. And of course the cliche of her wanting to be a writer living in New York City and all of that. But yeah, if you work in a restaurant, if you're a server, you'll love this novel. It'll just like make you laugh. It'll make you cry. It'll make you feel for her because this just captures what we all go through. Also, I love the details. Like those wine stains are part of the design. Like I didn't put that there. It's so great. Yeah, the New York Times book review says it's brilliantly written, outstanding, 100% agree. Like just the first page alone, I started underlining a few things. I just wanna share with you some of the details of her writing. Like the first paragraph itself is, I don't know what it is exactly being a server. It's a job, certainly but not exclusively. There's a transparency to it, an occupation stripped of the usual ambitions. One doesn't move up or down, one waits. You are a waiter. I just thought that was such a cool play on words. Or when she says she was hired at the restaurant at 22 and that's how old I was when I was hired at my first restaurant job. Outside of them, all you could remember was the blur of momentary madness. That is a weekend night at a restaurant. Momentary madness, and it's just a blur. Just everything about how she captures working in a restaurant felt like home to me. Sweet, bitter, it was such a great way to start my year off. Thank you so much, Sam, because you were so right. I did love it, and it did feel like home. The next book that I read was by YouTuber Brittany Taylor, and it is A Sucky Love Story. And just seeing the title alone, A Sucky Love Story, it was right when I was going through a bad breakup, so I thought it would help. I put it on my Christmas list. My mom got it for me. And then Shane Dawson's videos came out about Brittany story and everything that she went through and they mentioned this book and that was when I started to read it and it is amazing mostly because it's all true like I cannot believe that she went through this it captures her life as a youtuber and creator and kind of her growth with that but also her relationship and just the abuse that she went through not to mention the fact that she and her child were almost sold into like sex slavery unbelievable but it was really really great I love reading memoirs and true stories especially with people that are trying to follow the same path that I am with YouTube and social media. Sucky Love Story by Brittany Taylor. Check it out, you won't regret it. The next book on my list I forgot to grab off of my bookshelf, but it is The Almost Moon by Alice Siebold. So this is the author of The Lovely Bones and the autobiography Lucky. The Almost Moon is a fictional story about, it's kind of complicated because if I just say like what physically happens, it's going to sound completely different than what the book is about. But I guess what physically happens is this woman smothers her mother to death and then the book itself though is about the complicated relationship between mothers and daughters but also she's gonna go down for the murder of her mom so there's a bit of like crime and justice in it as well but it's really really good and it just kind of makes you think about the morale of everything what's right and what's wrong so I definitely recommend it was a really good read and Alice Siebold is an amazing writer I recommend her other books as well if you haven't read The Lovely Bones or Lucky they kind of go hand in hand because The Lovely Bones although it's fictional it is based off of her own experience that she talks about in her story lucky about when she was also raped. Obviously, The Lovely Bones, the protagonist, does not survive 
the abuse, but she does in Lucky. So yeah, they're really great and I recommend those. Next book on my list is by Connor Franta and it's an oldie but a goodie because I'm surprised I haven't read it yet and that is his first book that he wrote, A Work in Progress. So A Work in Progress is his memoir or autobiography just up to like the 22 years that he had lived at this point talking about his childhood and his creativity progress and how he kind of went from the small town Minnesota like lifestyle to Los Angeles and working with huge huge like photography people like his book was featured in a Kim Kardashian photo shoot I think he had photos in Vogue or some other like big magazine so I just love any success story especially when it feels close to home knowing that he went to a college that I know a lot of my friends have gone to because it's in Minnesota that he came from the same like soil that I did if that makes any sense just the way that he like found success at a young age and made all of the choices that he did make through his years in college to either like pursue his education or move to LA and pursue his career I just love those stories and he includes like a ton of his own pictures because obviously like photography is his passion it just makes you appreciate creators so much more and I just love the fact that I know he wrote this because a lot of youtubers can get hate for having ghostwriters and I think it's very obvious when you read one of their books whether or not they had a ghostwriter or whether or not they spent the time to write it and it comes from their own voice so Connor is just one of those kids who kids were like the same age who uh, I know just goes the extra mile with everything that he creates and just capturing like the beauty and everything it's just really wholesome and it really really left me inspired it made me want to capture more of my life it reads quickly obviously just like the layout of it as you can tell but I definitely recommend this if you need some inspiration if you are also a youtuber or someone on social media or even not if you just want to take like the path less traveled by in life and not do a traditional route of success you might really enjoy this or if you're just from Minnesota I want to read about a kid that got out of Minnesota <laughs> oh, but yeah I treasure it so much and I actually have a full bookshelf of all youtuber books in my YouTube office which is where we are right now to support other creators but also realize that like we're all the same I don't know I don't know it just doesn't make sense but I do have a YouTube shelf dedicated to all youtuber books as well that's where this book is going the next book that I read this year was also written by a youtuber and that is Katie Morton's are you okay book about mental health and happiness Katie Katie Morton is a licensed therapist that makes YouTube videos primarily about mental health and any like mental health illnesses out there but she collabs with other YouTubers as well obviously if you've watched any of Shane Dawson's videos you might have seen her in his series I don't want to say I'm a little disappointed with this book because it's exactly what it's like advertised as you know like a guide to caring for your mental health but I think as someone that knows a lot about mental health has spent almost a decade of her yeah over a decade oh my god 12 years in in therapy and someone that reads a lot of books about mental health it's a very broad introduction to mental health it goes through what is mental health how do I know if I need help preparing for your first appointment communication like what is a toxic relationship so if you need like a general overview and introduction to mental health I think this is a great book but if you're someone that's looking for more then stay tuned because I found a really really great book that I'm currently reading that I think you'll enjoy as well I did just want to support a youtuber and someone that creates content and does the social media thing about her book and I did read it and it was enjoyable but again it just felt very surfacey. The next book is actually by Lauren Graham who plays Lorelai in Gilmore Girls. If you are unfamiliar I think she's also in Parenthood. This girl if you needed a reminder but she's great. This is just a really easy coffee table read. It's called In Conclusion. Don't worry about it. It's the graduation speech that she gave at her hometown high school. I think I read this in one afternoon but again super inspirational, super motivational especially if you're going through a transition in your life because she's addressing high school graduates. She goes through her story to success and kind of like where she came from and how she got to where she is now. One quote that I highlighted is when she says, I've been the girl who was the lead and the one who wished she had the bigger part. The truth, they don't feel that different from each other. So just really humble and down to earth advice about how she found herself, about how it's okay. I just found another highlighted part that really just like, oh, took me by surprise and that's when she says the success parts of life look good to others but the best parts are actually the simple daily experiences this is true whether you're an actor or a teacher or a waitress I know this 
because I've been all three. And as someone that is only at the waitress part of the sentence, you know, it gives you hope. And I love when older people have wisdom like that because you look at her as this highly successful actress and writer. She was also where I am right now before she knew who she was. Don't wait until you're on Broadway. I thought that was inspirational. Great, cute little snippets of advice. It also makes a really cute coffee table read book as well. And I got this on Amazon for fairly cheap, I believe. So in conclusion, don't worry about it. The next book I also forgot to grab off of my bookshelf or I couldn't find it, I can't remember, but it's a memoir called Waking by Matthew, Matthew, oh, I don't remember his last name, but it was really good and I got it at the thrift store and I didn't even realize until I started reading it that it's a signed copy and he wrote something. I wish I could remember, it's on my Instagram somewhere. So if you're ever curious or need books to read, I do have a highlighted story on my profile on Instagram of all of the books that I have posted or read. It's just called Reads. So let me tap through that and try to find what I'm talking about. But the inscription that he wrote in this copy is, what the hell was that, Luna? Listen to your body with gratitude, Matthew. Which, this book itself, like, that means a lot because Waking is a memoir about his life. Again, he lives in Minnesota and he grew up in Iowa. But when he was a teenager, or maybe even eighth grade, I can't remember, I read this, like, in February, he and his family got into a really bad car accident. They slid off the road. His dad and his sister passed away at the scene and he was left paralyzed with a ton of conditions. He had to learn how to basically, like, survive all over again with his new conditions. You just follow his life and his progress of healing and how he went through very like depressed states and how he found purpose again and how his mother coped with I mean they lost half of their family and that's a hole that could never be filled it's crazy to see where he ends up it talks a lot about how yoga has helped him even though he's paralyzed he practiced yoga and he even teaches yoga and how it has helped him heal and it's done miraculous things for him and he's gone on to become a father and a husband so it's just crazy that that could happen I love memoirs like that so it just sends chills down my body after such a tragedy he has found hope again so I love books like that. Definitely recommend that as well. The next book that I read is a classic and I just had to throw in at least one children's book this year because last year I was in a children's literature course and it made me fall in love with children's chapter books all over again. They're classics meant for more than just children. So I picked up a copy that I had from the Barnes and Noble Classics Collection by Frances Hodgson Burnett. If you know what it is, just... <laughs> swear to God. If you know what this book is just by the author's name alone, that's amazing. But it's The Secret Garden and I never read this as a child. I was obsessed with different adaptations of the film, but I've never read it. It is a children's book, but as a young adult reading it, anyone can read it. The depth that this book has goes beyond a child's comprehension. Also, it has a ton of beautiful illustrations in it as well, but it's really, really beautiful and just the story itself, it needs to be remembered, it needs to be read again, and I'm trying to find this one quote that I like sent to my mom. I sent her like the whole page and I was like, you have to read this because it was so beautiful. But the writing is absolutely breathtaking. But yeah, it's just a very classic tale. I read this in the summer. It made me want to start gardening. Yeah, you need to read it. It's great. The next book that I read is by Maya Angelou and it is Mom and Me and Mom. And halfway through this book, I had to question, have I read this before? Because it felt oddly striking to another book by Maya Angelou that I have read and that is I Know why the caged bird sings and the reason that is is because the other books I've read by her are more autobiography memoir types of her life and this is a collection of moments in her life about the relationship between her and her mother and her and her son there are parts where I'm like I've definitely read this and that's because she kind of retells the same stories but in different contexts she also includes a ton of photos which I really enjoyed because it just brought the characters that much more to life and this is a photo of Maya Angelou and her own mother just the stories that this woman has gone through alone blows my mind. If you're unfamiliar, she grew up in the South for a little bit during a time very different than what we are used to now. I think she was living with her grandmother. She didn't really know her mom as a child because her mom left and I can't remember the details, but at some point the grandmother took Maya Angelou to go live with her mom for a summer and you know, it was hard. She said she didn't call her mom for a long time because there's obviously a lot of pain with the 
the fact that her mom wasn't there to raise her. It kind of takes you through their relationship and how they grew so close and how Maya Angelou like got pregnant with her son at a young age. And I love the photos, like I said, because it does just bring everything. Her life itself is just like pure madness, how successful she became and how she performed on so many things and how she met so many influential people. She's an icon. Just another iconic memoir style book on a powerful woman and everything that you can accomplish in life. Very motivational, very, very inspiring. So I definitely recommend easy read, big font. You can get through it pretty fast if you're looking for a book like that. So good and it also reminds you that no matter where you stand with your mother or a parental figure in your life, that relationship will continue to change and grow and transform and it can get better. The next book that I read I found in a thrift store and there's a big story behind it. I talked about it in that video that I posted a few months ago so you might know this already but it's Why We Broke Up by Daniel Handler and I saw this and I was like this might be good for me because of breakups and stuff but what really captured me was the fact that on the inside it goes this is the box Ed. Inside is everything. Two bottle caps, a movie ticket, a note from you, a box of matches, your protractor, Jones book, the stolen sugar, the toy truck, those ugly earrings, a comb from the motel, and the rest of it. This is it, Ed. The whole story of why we broke up. And I have those boxes. I've got the boyfriend boxes of things that seem like trash to someone but mean the world to me. So the fact that this book is broken up into chapters titled different items and they take you through the stories of each item and it's all illustrated. And even when I was flipping through it at the thrift store, someone pressed a flower into it and I was like, okay, I need to buy this book because this is my it. And then when I got home, I realized that Daniel Handler is the real name of the pen name Lemony Snicket, who was my favorite childhood author, who I met at the Mall of America when I was eight years old. It felt very like calling to me. I read this in the bathtub one night, fast read, super great. Makes you cry, makes you laugh. It was great. I really like it. I value this book. It won an award. It won the Michael Prince Award for Excellence in Young Adult Literature. 10 out of 10. Highly recommend. You'll love it, especially if you've gone through a breakup or if you were in a relationship in high school, you'll definitely feel connected to the story. The next book that I read is called The Arrow and I thrifted this book. I really love old books. Like I have a whole collection of first edition books. Books are something that holds so much value and I feel like they get more valuable over time. So the older the book, the more that I love it. And this book that I found is absolutely beautiful. It's a first edition novel and it's from the library of Jack F. Brown who lived in St. Paul, Minnesota. And he put the date in here as July 12th, 1965. I love that. The book itself was written in 1927, so it's 93 years old. In a few short years, it'll be 100 years old, and that's when I really, really love a copy of a book is when it hits 100 years. The Arrow reads really quickly because of the indents and how it's just written. It's about this man's tale on the sea. I mean, I'm just going to spoil it because I doubt anyone's going to be able to find this book or read it, but at the end, you realize that the arrow he's had in his body, the whole book that he's like frantic about because there's an arrow sticking out of him and nobody else can see it is Cupid's arrow. It's like a love arrow and that's why it's in his heart and that's why it hurts so much. Timeless tale. I love that I have this to add to my collection of old literature books. I'm basically Joe from you. <laughs> Minus the murder and stalking part, but the old book part, I've got down. The next book that I read is a novel by Patty Yumi Cottrell. I don't know if I'm saying her name right, but it's called Sorry to Disrupt the Peace. This is such a sweet little novel. It won the Barnes & Noble Discover Great Writers Award. So basically, this book is about a girl whose brother kills himself and she has to go back home to Wisconsin and kind of deal with the tragedy and her family and it unravels a ton of deep stuff about her relationship to her parents who are not her birth parents. They adopted her and she never calls them mom and dad. It's always like my adoptive parents. She also questions how her brother could have killed himself. She kind of unfolds that mystery because her parents do not speak of it. It's any classic tale about a successful individual that has made it out of their hometown, has to go back to their hometown and suddenly feels very small and shriveled and questioned and doubted and all of that. But it's really good and she is such a beautiful writer. Just the way that she tells the story is 
breathtaking. So it's a really good novel if you want a good fiction story that is kind of like deep and sad but also humorous and she finds a way to really bring those two things together and in the end you get all the answers that you wanted about her brother and her family and why she left her hometown and never comes back. It's really great so I recommend this. The next book that I read is one that I have been wanting to read for years and I finally found a copy at Goodwill and had to pick it up and that is Wicked. I love the Broadway musical Wicked. It's the first one I fell in love with. Yeah, I was in fourth grade when I heard the song popular for the first time and I was like, this is it. But I've never read the book. I've seen the musical, but I've never read the book. The book is amazing. It almost makes more sense in the novel than on stage, and that's because obviously like for a musical you have to take out a lot of the story and kind of make it fit the stage, but the book just like really brings everything together and you totally see how it connects to The Wizard of Oz more. There are so many big themes in here that I want to get into, but the characters just feel so much more dimensional than they ever did before, and I thought the characters were like actual people because of the show and the musical, but here it's like you get to see Alphaba's childhood from before she was born to her upbringing to her schoolgirl days to like the days where she's in hiding and everyone thinks she's dead. Absolutely amazing. This book probably took me the longest to read, but obviously it's because it's a very big book and it's green. I love that. It made me fall in love with the musical all over again. I was listening to the soundtrack on repeat. You just, you want things to be different for her and Fierro, even though you know what's going to happen. You still hope that Gregory McGuire will surprise you. But it's a classic, so if you like musical theater or just need a good book, I definitely recommend Wicked. Ooh, the next book I read is The Art of Intuition by Sophie Burnham, and I just talked about this in my video that I posted about how to increase your intuition and become more psychic, so definitely watch that. If you haven't yet, it'll be listed above as well as down below, but this is a book all about the art of intuition and how to find your own intuition, what intuition really is, and how to hone in on yours, how to strengthen your psychic abilities, and it's written so well. So if you want an in-depth analyzation on this book, watch that video because I talk a ton about it. I include a ton of quotes and I really break down a lot of big topics for you. To save like 15 minutes, that's all I'm going to say about this book in this video, but just know that there's a whole video all about this book already up on my channel. It's just crazy how cool the world is and how little we know. So it's really good. The next book that I read this year is Freedom by JC Dugard. So JC is actually the girl from the 70s that got kidnapped and was held hostage for 18 years in a man's backyard. Her first book, A Stolen Life, kind of goes through the years that she was held captive for, but her second book, Freedom, is about her new life after being released. It made me fall in love with the case all over again. I went back and watched all of the old news stories of when she was saved and found and her daughters and all of that stuff. It's called Freedom, My Book of Firsts because it's all about the first time that she would do certain things, like the first time that she took a cab by herself. I wouldn't even think about how big of a deal that would be, but when she was kidnapped, her captor stunned her and threw her into his car, and that's how she was kidnapped. So think about voluntarily getting into a cab at night at an airport with a strange man. The way that she's overcome such intense trauma is crazy. The first time she had a drink from Starbucks, the first time she got drunk and hung over, even though she's in her 30s, like think about it, she wasn't able to do that growing up, so she captures all of it. So inspiring, gives you so much hope that she can live such a positive of life. It talks about how those years have affected her, but also it's crazy how well she's doing with therapy and everything because she's obviously super close to therapists that work with her and travel with her. But just like the story of how she was able to take a cab for the first time was super, super inspiring because that had to have been so traumatic, but she was able with the help of her therapist do it and realize that this man isn't going to hurt you. It was really, really great. I definitely recommend it. Again, love memoirs. The next book that I read is by my absolute favorite fictional modern writer and that is Jodi Picoult. Oh, I love every single one of her books. The, the or, just, I can't even talk. You can tell it's the end of the video because I'm losing all vocabulary. It's really good. I can't say anything about it because it will give away the plot, but if you've read any of Jodi Picoult's books before, you know that they all follow the same type of outline and that is a story with twists and turns. You had no idea were coming, a crime of some sort, and then you go through the whole court case and it gets legal, but it's so good and I love the way she writes. She will forever be my favorite like current fictional writer and I love all of her books and I remember in high school I wrote to her an email because I wanted to be a writer and an author and she responded
responded back the next day with a ton of advice so I just I love her so much and this is another great book by her the last book that I read in 2019 I am NOT getting out of my bookshelf because I had to put it in like a deep place and it would be really hard to take it out but that is the tipping point by Malcolm Gladwell this is the second book by Malcolm Gladwell that I've read I read blink in high school and I didn't like blink I had to read it for class I just couldn't really follow it I didn't like his style of writing I didn't connect with it but I gave the tipping point a chance because one it's been years it's been like five or six years since I've read one of his books so I thought maybe I would change my mind two it's a separate book itself so maybe I would like this one and three the subject matter itself sounded really interesting to me because the tipping point is all about the little things and how the little things can make a big difference and as a creator I'm realizing that you need to take time to do the little things because they will make a big difference like my intro I took the time to make these little details that I think will make a big difference but if you've read any of Malcolm Gladwell's writing you know that his style is very I don't know like journalism-esque it feels very sciencey and I'm just my mind doesn't work like that so I didn't enjoy the book it was very factual it had a lot of information it read like a textbook to me maybe that's why I didn't like it that's the last book that I finished in 2019 and then the book that I started that I'm still reading and this will be the first book of my 2020 list in a year is emotional freedom by Judith Orloff and it's about liberating yourself from negative emotions and transforming your life also it's yellow my favorite color but it's a huge book just about mental health emotions how to change your life how to like function through your emotions it's written by a psychiatrist in private practice and she has a ton of years of experience and knowledge on therapy and health mental health and emotions and she just writes all about it in this book I'm learning so much this is the book that I mentioned earlier when I mentioned are you okay by Katie Morton and I said if you want something more in depth if you know more about the topics and you want to dive deeper this is it I'm underlining absolutely everything on every single page I need to copy it all down in my journal and what's so great to me is that the first chapter goes into intuition which this is a book about mental health and emotions and how to be happier and she starts with introducing intuition and how you need to be aware of intuition and how the feeling so liberating it says it pushes beyond the limits of linear understanding intuition is a potent wisdom not me mediated by the linear mind a practical smart decision-making aid intuition can be a hunch a dream a knowing specific guidance or a warning of danger during troubled times, intuition is a voice in the wilderness to get you through, and when things are good, it'll help them stay that way. But yeah, just the fact that I really lead my life through my intuition, and I follow it, and I have all these videos about intuition, and how important it is to listen to that feeling inside of you, the fact that this book about emotions and health begins with your intuition, it just really means something, you know? She has this one quote by Albert Einstein too, and he says, the most beautiful experience we can have is the mysterious. I mean, I just want to line and copy down absolutely everything that she is writing oh my gosh that wasn't even chapter one that was the introduction so yeah it's great I'm only two chapters into it but I don't want it to end like I'm learning so much it's grounding me I really do think it's transforming emotions and helping you react respond and live by better like positive emotions and changing your life so it's a wonderful book to start 2020 with and then I did just want to include this as well because I got it as a gift earlier today that is this book Ray and Joan by Lisa Napoli one of the nurses that work in my parents house who I've known since I was like 12 years old gifted me this book for Christmas this year and it's about the McDonald fortune and how they gave away billions of dollars of it I had no idea like the backstory behind McDonald's but it says the man who made the McDonald's fortune and the woman who gave it all away and then on the back it says Ray and Joan reveals the high cost of great wealth before Joan Kroc could give away so generously the billions from the McDonald's hamburger fortune fortune she first had to put up with the flawed man who made the golden arches ubiquitous it's an american power couple and the incredible contributions one woman has made to society i love a good woman in power book i love the inspiration behind that and this is a bit of modern history in it so it will hopefully read like a memoir i think it will be really really good so thank you so much for this book i love it already i can't wait to read it in 2020 one last thing too this year is that on facetime last night with yon did i mention this already she and i are starting a book club this year so the the first book that I'm reading for my book club with Jan, if you want to read along with us, is How to Be a Badass. I think it will be a great book to start the year off with. But yeah, those are all the books that I read in 2019. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or what books you read this year. I'm always looking for more books to add to my list of things to read. But thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it and I'll see you real soon with my next one. Bye!